Hey, Brennan here today, and I'm going to be building some custom blocks with PineGrow and using automatic CSS as the framework. And if we come look at the editor here, I've got them, some custom blocks that we'll be making with automatic CSS. All these are controlled with just uh, utility variables. So um, there's a ability to change the background image, so I can come in here and change that. And then I can come to my image overlay and change that and kind of change the opacity there. So these are all using the automatic CSS utility variables. Uh, and so a couple things I'll say right off the bat, I'm not an expert in custom blocks. I'm not, uh, I'm pretty new to the whole concept, right? So I just uh, wanted to show how to get some stuff going. There's other videos that are way more in depth and go over all the pros and cons of using custom blocks and using a framework uh, within your custom blocks and things like that. So definitely check out uh, particularly Adam Lowe's videos. He's got a great series on Pine Grow. Um, but in any case, uh, I have a site here that has, I just have generate press here. You could use the default theme. We're just making custom blocks in Gutenberg. So it should uh, should hopefully work uh, regardless of your theme, All right? So we have um, a couple plugins here. I've got ACSS that we're gonna be using. Uh, we're gonna be using this WP file manager to get the CSS uh, location. You don't need that actually. Um, and so let's just jump into Pine Grow. Let's just get it into a project. And so what we're going to be doing is making some controls uh, for the end user to make uh, a project. I just picked the no CSS, no no uh, bootstrap or tailwind option for this theme. I just went through it quickly. And that's the other thing I'm going to be moving kind of quickly to just keep this kind of small or keep this short. So um, yeah, so let's get started. Let's activate Pine Grow and we'll make this, um, you know, custom, we'll just call it custom blocks as the plugin name. And that's all we're going to change here. Let's just save that. And what we need to do is, you know, I need to go get my automatic CSS uh, style sheet. So let's just show how to do that. I need to go into, I have this plugin here, but you don't need it uh, to find this. And this is under WP content and then uploads ACSS. And we're just going to grab this first one here, get info, and copy that link. And then I'll go back here. And so what I want to do is, uh, first go to, this is my structure panel. This is like my design panel. So this is also the various files in here so that I can see the CSS and there's the index.html. I'm going to edit this and open in code. And I just want to paste the style sheet in and then make a copy of this one. Put that in there. And of course, this will change depending on your domain. But... Okay, so that's fine for now. I can close that and I can go up here to my style tab, go to styles and refresh, and I should see the CSS in here. Refresh here, and refresh here. All right, there it is. So I'll go ahead and lock that, and we'll be good to go. So what we're gonna do is just make a super, super simple card. And so we can just start adding the elements to the page, and we don't even really need to style anything. So. We'll just, uh, I can hit insert here and I can drag sections in, of course. Uh, I can also use the sort of smart inserter here uh, to type, right? So I can do like a div and then um, an h2 and call this card heading. And we can do a paragraph text of, uh, you know, card description text. And we could do a link of get started. And then I can just drag that whole section and drag it in there. All right, so we can already see automatic CSS is working because we have the padding for the top and bottom. All right, so great. That's all we really need to do. So let's make this into a card. All right, and let's make this into a block. So I'm going to come up here to my WordPress actions. And we're just going to make this into a block. So I'll hit block and I'll call this um, um, my, my block. Um, and of course you can browse the icons for it. We can make a custom category. We can register it, register the custom blocks category. Uh, let's see, do I need to, yeah, I think we're good there. Uh, right. So we can save this and I'll name this custom blocks. And let's go ahead and export this plugin and we can go to the front end now. And uh, so we're back to our admin here and I can go to the plugin list. And there's my custom blocks plugin. You can see it's written by John Smith. So I'll be able to change that to my name, of course. So custom blocks that is enabled. And because I've created something called my blocks, let's go to pages and let's add a new one. 
and let's uh, custom blocks is the page title and let's go to add here and there's my block so there it is there's the custom block you can't edit anything yet right I can't change anything there's no controls here so that's what we're going to be doing so now that we have ACSS added we can now come to our custom block and uh, now that we have on this block level, on the top level here, I can just add attributes to this. So I can add block attributes, and I can call this uh, padding. It's got to be lowercase. Uh, and for the use case, uh, for we're, instead of using it as a content thing, we're going to use it as a class. And we want it to have a, a little class area that we can uh, add attributes to. So here are the attribute options. And we're just going to kind of ignore some of these things in here. We don't, we're not going to do anything with empty or post property, default value. Uh, but the control type is what kind of um, controls do we want to give our end user, right? So if we click this, we want to give them uh, a rich text, a text area, and uh, we want to give them a select field. Okay, so to be able to choose the different paddings. And then so now we can define our paddings. And so this will be like extra small. And then we do equals, and we're going to add in the ACSS utility class, pad, XS, and small equals, you know, add dash dash s you get the idea i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the rest of these i have uh, these pulled up in a little text editor here that i can copy and paste the the value so you see the name of it that we that people will see and then that's the actual class that's applied all right and so we're going to do the rest of these two we can see we have some colors we have the text we have some overlays stuff like that so let's just keep going with the padding i'm going to copy and paste the rest of these in here and that will give us some options and so let's do uh, let's do a, one more attribute. Let's add a, so this is our first block attribute that we're applying directly to the block. Let's go ahead and add a uh, attribute here. And let's call this uh, background color. And what we're gonna do is again, same idea. We're gonna use it as a class. And we're going to hit the attributes down here. We're gonna change our control type to again, select. And then we can just add our classes primary equals bg uh, dash dash primary right and again i'm going to speed this up by uh, copy and pasting some of these in here right so there's our bg primary there's our bg ultra light and ultra dark and i don't know let's just throw in these secondaries for good measure all right so now that we have these attributes applied to the block let's go ahead and save our project and export the plugin again and i will come back to our post and now that we have a static block here uh, let's go ahead and reload this. Oops, I probably should have saved it. Uh, but now we see we have these options here. We have block properties, and these are the various attributes. So I can do extra small and dark, but we see nothing's changing here. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And the, the next thing I need to do is come back to our file manager and grab the ACSS uh, block editor CSS file. So I'm going to uh, get info, right click, and there's a copy link address. And I'm going to come back to our block in Pine Grow. And on the block level here, scroll up here to my block. And under the more options, I need to define the editor style. So I'm just going to paste that guy in there for the CSS that will define the styles in the editor. And so now I can come back to uh, my custom block, refresh. And just like that, we have the styles in. And if I do this, it is going to react. Right. So these are the colors. Right, there's we got our backgrounds. And so like that, we have our editor styles defined. And so let's go back into our project and let's make these uh, the heading for the card, the description and the button. Let's add some fields to those. So if I click onto that field, you can see it opens up in the structure panel. We're gonna add block attributes to that. And this is just gonna be the card heading, right? We can use that. And we're just gonna leave it as a content field. We're gonna leave all the other options. And that's all we need to do. And then we're going to click under the description and we have a couple options here. If you want to define what kind of blocks you're uh, giving pe to people, or if you want to give them a little more freedom, uh, I can add like a block inner content. And this will allow me to have any content blocks within Gutenberg uh, into this uh, section here. So by default, it allows all block types. You can de further define this and, and section it down uh, by only allowing certain block types as well. And so um, we'll just leave it as block inner content because right now we'll just leave it as uh, it'll allow all text fields, all images, all things like that. And so on our button, we can add another block attribute. And by default, it's going to pick that, pick it up that it's a link. And so this will be button link. And I can just say button link. 
And then I can add another attribute to this same element, right? Our second attribute will be our uh, button text so that the, the user can define the button as text and they can define the content of the button. All right, so let's go ahead and export our plugin again and come back to our custom block here. Let's go ahead and I guess, save that. And I will refresh. And because we've added some, uh, some block attributes in there, we need to do a block recovery. And now I can see my cursor is right there and I am able to select it. This is my heading. And this is a, you know, a React block, so I can type here, or I can also type it over here, right? And I can type here, um, right? So that is working as intended. And in here, you can see there's a little plus. I can add any other blocks. By default, it's a paragraph block. Uh, you know, you, if you're making custom blocks in an intricate way, you probably don't necessarily want this option. To just You can add any blocks that'll potentially ruin the design because you can add layout elements and things like that. Probably better to restrict that. Uh, I also see I'm missing my button styles here. Let me look at the front end, and I don't know why that's happening there. I guess I haven't put any classes uh, on it, so that's why. But let me go back to my uh, my button, and we can define some button styles on here, right? So I, just how I did with the uh, padding and background color, I can come down to my button, and I can add another attribute, and we could call this, uh, you know, button uh, button styles, right? and button styles and we're going to use that again as a class so we can apply those utility classes and so if i just um let's just go over again to my other screen here i've got the buttons for my outline primary secondary black white etc so i can put my attributes in there and the control type again is uh, select and right? so i can just define all those options for the end user all right so export that and let's uh refresh and right now, now I've got button text that I can define. I can change the button link as well. So it's, it's really nice to be able to, do, to just define what properties are allowed. Uh, you know, you can change that directly within the WordPress system. And this is my button text, right? So same idea, you can change it. I can add my style. Oh, and it's not, it looks like it's not picking up the button style. Let's see. If I go back to the front end. Oh, it is picking it up in the front end. So not entirely sure because the rest of the editor is working. Uh, yeah, not sure. I don't really want to troubleshoot that now because it's going to derail this, the point of this. So um, let's just go back to add some more attributes to our block. All right. So again, we let's recap. We've added the padding and background color variable, uh, sorry, utility classes in here, right? So we've defined uh, the, the utility classes that can be used. And those are the various paddings. And again, like, I guess I'll just reiterate that, you know, there's, there's probably, uh, yeah, I'd say probably, there's definitely more in, uh, elegant ways of doing this that are more scalable and, you know, probably have fewer dependencies and things like that. And also like, you wouldn't necessarily make this exact thing into a card, but Hey, we're just, we're just demoing the things. I hope we're having fun. And, um, yeah, anyway, let's, um, let's just add some more elements, uh, attributes again to the class. So, sorry, getting distracted here. We've got our block right here, and then we have the various attributes applied to it. So there's our padding, there's our background colors that we have, and let's add another one. Let's add, uh, we can add default WordPress ones, right? So I could add a background image, right? Background image, background image, and I can, for use as, instead of like class or content, I could select background image, and that might be all I need there. So let's um, let's export that and let's come back to our custom block and refresh. And right there, I have added this attribute to the background image. So let's see what I've gotten here. Some some amazing image. If you can't if you can't surf with the big dog, stay off the net. That's right. That's great advice. Uh, that looks terrible. Um, but you know, you can also like we can duplicate these and group them all. Uh, into you know, wide width and whatever, make them into a stack of cards. So um, probably should have prepared a better video, uh, a better image than this. Uh, in fact, let's just delete this because it's a little silly. Uh, but anyway, you get the idea. So there's my custom block. It's back in there, unstyled. I can drag it in my row. Uh, I can duplicate it. And again, I can also, there's multi-select in Gutenberg, which is very nice, right? So I can go in here and add padding to all of those. I can change them all into dark cards and just like that, uh, we see that uh, we've got our cards. 
So again, button style's not working there, but it is on the, well, I thought it was on the front end. Again, I can select all of them again and go to button styles and say, oh, I want white buttons there. And normally this would be able to, you'd be able to see it in the editor, but yeah, there it is. So yeah, there's our cards and we can add background images to them. And what else can we do? We can add, um, let me see if I can find a better image here. Uh, let's see. Um, excuse me while I click around here. Um, architecture images. Those are, those are always solid. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go to media. Just add some new media. Let's just throw some of these in there. Okay. We've got some some fancy fancy images there. So I can again come back to my custom blocks and I can let's make those all a little bit bigger. Right. And then let's change the background image here. And it's gonna look a little funky. I guess we're not gonna go into tweaking all of this stuff, but I can put those on there and right off the bat though, like we're seeing some limitations where oh no, I haven't given them overlay classes to like change the opacity of this. Uh, so that it looks a little better, um, but like you know, I, I can't really can't really change it here. You know, that's changing the text a little bit, but realistically, like you'd need to give them some better controls. So let's just go back into our project and let's do just that. So we'll come up to the block again, and we'll come coming down. We again, we've got our block, and we've got our padding, and we've got our background color, and we've got our background image. Let's add, um, let's add an overlay class. All right, so we can call this. Um, Image overlay, overlay, where is it? Okay, and let's just, let's just use it as a class and we're gonna apply because automatic CSS provides us uh, utility classes just for this purpose, right? Uh, so we can add a dark overlay or a light overlay. I'm going to add a light overlay. So it'd be like light 50% and it'd be equal to the classes overlay dash dash white and I think 50, check my notes over here. Yep, that's what I got. So let me just copy and paste the rest. And so there we've got all the way up to 90% transparency available, probably 50% is a little low. Let's just not give them that option. So let's just export this and come back to our project and refresh and we'll open up our blocks and let's copy those and we will come down and see, we should have an image overlay, All right, So if we go 90%, that is, now a nice little overlay on the background image, right? So let's select these. And again, we can probably change this down to like 70%, a little better. This is my description. So there we've got it. Um, we've got custom blocks in automatic CSS and we've applied some custom styling with the utility classes. And we've also applied like the WordPress background image uh, field directly to the custom block. They can edit directly in the editor. They can edit directly here. Now, again, um, I'll say at the end now, hopefully people made it this far that there are, you know, inherent limitations to this and inherent like uh, pros and cons to uh, doing it like this. So uh, keep that in mind. And hopefully we uh, we got some of the, the characteristics of, of what goes into like making a custom block and having it be available to in the block editor. I think there's something to be said about this approach that uses sort of a more curated experience to give to clients something that uh, is intuitive, but perhaps uses the, the design systems that are in place, is using variables. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm curious what everyone's thoughts are. Uh, if you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.